Within our atmosphere, there are many different types of thunderstorms. And when people think of thunderstorms, they often consider such classifications as supercells, squall lines, and even pulse storms. But there is one type of thunderstorm which is different from all the others, and many people may not be aware of it. In today's video, we're going to examine the science behind it and answer the question, what are elevated thunderstorms? To understand elevated thunderstorms, let's examine one of their more common environments, the cool sector of a mid-latitude cyclone. In this setup, a warm front is usually found moving into an area of cooler, relatively dense air. This shallow layer of air is statically stable, that is, it is resistant to vertical displacement. It also has lower potential temperature than the air on the warm side of the front. Air tends to move into areas with equal density, so for air south of the front to maintain relative density by preserving potential temperature, it must lift over the cool air. This is what's called isentropic lifting, as air moves upward along sloping isentropic surfaces and produces an overrunning pattern over the cool sector. Surface parcels within cooler air have a higher density relative to the overriding air, resulting in their stability and inability to contribute to thunderstorms. However, the warmer air above a stable layer is different. With respect to the cold upper atmosphere, these parcels are unstable, sometimes unstable enough for thunderstorms. And that leads us to the definition of elevated convection. Convection that originates from an atmospheric layer above the boundary layer. Unlike the thunderstorms we often see in warm and moist surface environments, which have the updraft bases rooted within the planetary boundary layer, Elevated thunderstorms have updrafts located above this layer. Because of this displacement from the layer of air near the surface, severe weather parameters which rely on surface conditions are poor indicators of elevated thunderstorm environments. Of the three main variants of convective available potential energy, both surface-based CAPE and mixed-layer CAPE use surface parcels to calculate buoyancy. But the third variant, most unstable CAPE, uses the most unstable parcel within the lowest 300 millibars of the atmosphere, which may be located above the boundary layer. The level at which this most unstable parcel is located is referred to as the lifted parcel level, or LPL. With elevated thunderstorms, we can have convection located at the top of a frontal boundary or an inversion layer. And while this displacement from the surface makes tornadoes unlikely, since they require surface-based rotation to develop, these storms are far from harmless. They can produce intense lightning, large hail, heavy rain, and sometimes even wind damage. You can get a general sense of severe weather potential by looking at the EMU cape. Isolated severe weather may occur with values at or above 1000 joules per kilogram, while significant severe weather may occur with values at or above 2000 joules per kilogram. Elevated thunderstorms associated with particularly dynamic low-pressure systems can become prolific hail producers. These setups often feature strong lifting along the warm front, as well as an increase in moisture from the south, with more forceful lifting provided by jet stream dynamics. Because winds aloft change speed and direction sharply north of such warm fronts, enough wind shear can exist for the updraft to begin rotating. We now have an elevated supercell. These storms can produce dangerous lightning and damaging hail, sometimes exceeding 2 inches in diameter. And this is why you should treat all National Weather Service severe thunderstorm warnings seriously. What kind of environment is conducive to elevated thunderstorms? To get widespread precipitation from isentropic lifting, you typically want a low-level jet of moderate or strong intensity, we'll say 40 knots, advecting higher mixing ratio air toward an area with lower mixing ratios. This low-level jet should have wind vectors oriented perpendicular to a tight pressure slope indicated by a gradient and potential temperature surfaces, which will support more forceful lifting. Add that with sufficient MU cape, and your elevated storms should be rocking and rolling. How can you distinguish elevated storm environments from those of surface-based storms? One quick way is to compare SB cape and MU cape values on maps such as a forecast model or by the Storm Prediction Center's meso-analysis page. If an area has very little or no SB cape, but does have appreciable MU cape, this could indicate elevated instability. On forecast soundings, you may note the lifted parcel path originating above the surface, as from the base of an inversion, unlike surface-based thunderstorm environments. Another way is to note the location of the effective inflow layer base. 
If this space is above the surface, it indicates that much of the instability is likely elevated. So now you know what elevated thunderstorms are, the hazards they pose, and what sets them apart from others. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please leave a like and consider subscribing. Thank you.